Yo, 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 yo. Episode 86 of Video Rot. I'm Aaron. Riverman here. It's the next episode. Todd was rapping right before you guys missed it. He was rapping before we went live. He's like, he just, he did the whole next episode bar for bar. You had Chronic 2001, man. I mean, that's a fantastic album. Have you, uh, have you guys heard Mac and Zach's cover of Forgot About Dre? Mm-mm. It's so funny. Oh, really? They, did, they yeah, they did a covers <laughs> album like a long time ago, like five, six, seven years ago. And, uh, I'm pretty sure they just, they they were just doing the vocals over like the actual backing track of the, the album, right? Yeah. So they didn't play yeah. the but dude, they're they're uh forgot about Dre is so funny. And uh Zach is doing Dre and then Matt comes in to do Eminem's part at the oh. end. <laughs> 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 and it's it's good, dude. Like and, and you know what's funny is Zach has the deep he could do the deep voice kind of like Dre. Yeah. Uh it's it's good though. I, I don't I don't even know where I can get it or uh you know where it's available I, at right we now. We should do doggy style, man. And then I could be, I mean, Nate Dog. I want to be Nate Dog. He's my, one of my favorites, but yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be the background. You can take the Snoop part. The shizzle. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so last week we um, we talked about a glorious straight to video uh, Corey Feldman gem, and what was that called again? <laughs> uh dangerous place dangerous pl- a dangerous place and yeah. uh i don't know man i just got just got hitting those uh uh i almost said std stv uh feels straight to <laughs> i got hitting those std feels it just uh started hitting home no i no i i i feel like in this mood i want i binge watching these straight to video movies and i'm kind of loving it you know and I, I i it's this it's this desire for the search, the hunt, because I know when you're watching straight to video stuff, a lot of it's just rehashed ideas done cheaply. Like, oh, I've seen this before, but I've seen it better and with a bigger budget. But I'm like, I just I I yearn to like wade through the shit to find like a movie that's like, wow, this is actually a good movie. Like, it's actually unique. This could have if this had a little bit more money in it, it could have been a great film. Uh, and I, I definitely have a handful of those types of flicks that I'm partial to. Uh a, a, a group of movies I would like to get to eventually is, do you remember, well, everybody knows Showtime, right? Showtime. Back in the 90s, Showtime had, uh, there was a studio. I don't know if they had anything to do necessarily with Showtime, but or if they had some kind of deal with Showtime where they showed their movies. I don't really know. But you guys remember Two Left Shoes Productions? No. Okay, mm. so there was this uh, company called Two Left Shoes, and... I think maybe the most popular movie you might know from them, and I always say that because it's getting like a, I think it got like a Vinegar Syndrome release or something, but Lover's Lane, there's a movie called Lover's Lane. I couldn't believe it. One of the boutiques was that putting sound, it out. That sounds familiar. I couldn't believe it. it, it it's it, it got It's getting put out by one of the boutiques, and I'm like, are, are you kidding me? That's straight to fucking video uh, Two Left Shoes joint? And uh, it's about it's Lover's Lane. It's like the old uh, old wives tale about you go up to Lover's Lane, the overlook, and there's a guy with a hook. He's going to kill you. OK, and, from 2000. I got it pulled up. OK. Yeah. Yeah. We we had so many of these videos and, uh, you know, my dad would would buy them at like rental stores, like, you know, secondhand or whatever. And we 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 just ended up with a bunch of these two left shoe movies. And that one, I love it because there's this guy, it, it, you know, it has. It has like an incident in the past, and then there's like a time jump of like 20 years or whatever, and then the killer's back. Almost kind of like I Know What You Did Last Summer type of thing. Yeah. And I love it because like there's a bunch of kids, and then there's like a cop. There's like a cop that was around in the past, kind of like your Dr. Loomis or whatever, and then he's obviously in present day. But it's one of those flicks where the, the to show the passage of time, he has a mustache, like a fake mustache 20 years earlier, but he looks like he's 50 and then 20 years passes and they just ripped that mustache off <laughs> like they couldn't bother to give it a different hairstyle, makeup or whatever. But I love it. And this guy, he looks like we used to call him Mari Povich, like, oh, bootleg Mari, because he looks like Mari, man. But anyway, uh, they actually had some movies that I'm a sucker. I, I we quote that movie. But it wasn't one of my favorites. But there is a movie that was put out by Two Left Shoes called Heist. 
Uh, mm. Not to be confused with the many films that are called heist. A lot, you know. There's the heist. There's a heist movie with like what Danny DeVito and like Martin Lawrence. There's like a heist. This movie was straight to video goodness because it starred Luke Perry, mm-hmm. Luke Perry, uh, Ice T. Mm. Which you know you can't have your straight to video garbage without Ice T in there. Some of Ice T, man. And uh, there's a few supporting characters, but the the other supporting character of note is one David Faustino, a.k.a. Bud Bundy. Hmm. And it's amazing. And it's just our family loved this movie for some reason. And I think my mom even, like, found it on, like, Tubi or something, and she watched it. She's like, I found that movie Heist. I was watching I love Heist. I love Heist. Um, <laughs> it's, just, it's just ridiculous, man. Um, but anyway, so we got more of that in for you today. We're going to be talking about um, – this Robert Patrick joint called zero tolerance. Uh, But before we get into that, I would like to ask Todd what he's watched. If he doesn't mind besides zero tolerance, hopefully he watched that. Yeah. Blaine from dust till dawn Two. That's actually in my list with Uh, Robert Patrick. But anyway, something we need to watch here. I I am on a kick, man. If this goes over well, we might be doing more straight to video (laughs) for the next episode, but uh, okay. So all all this shit you can find on YouTube as well. I love this man. The straight to video stuff. People have been uploading stuff on YouTube. I love it. I thought this worked out great this week. Um, What I've been watching. I don't know. By the way, I don't know if it's great for algorithms or if people really want to see this shit, but I don't care. It's kind of fun uh, because I'm really tempted to suggest we do that movie heist with Luke Perry. I'm really tempted. Now, whether anybody's looking for it, I think it's going to be our job to promote how stupid it is. Like Todd, step up his thumbnail to make sure you get like Ice Ice T's derpy scowl on there or whatever do with luke perry well the the listeners might check it out i mean i i hope you know at least they check out zero tolerance and some of the other shit we uh go through all right well yeah recently um i really haven't been watching a whole lot recently i mean i've been keeping up on the news but for watching shit like i've been watching a lot of so i have peacock and i've been watching a lot of like those Stone Cold Steve Austin has his own like uh, podcast show, that sort of thing on there. I can't remember what it's called. The Rattlesnake something. Uh, I haven't watched that. I would I would have called the show The Rattlesnake Shake. uh, Name uh, Skid 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 Row song from their debut album. Oh yeah, shake 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 it like a rattlesnake. (laughs) Yeah, go ahead. Uh, So I've been watching interviews with him and um, uh, Kevin Nash. watching with him and Jerry Lawler, like some of the old wrestlers and shit. I just like their old stories of them going to different towns and shit. That's what he pretty much goes, goes by. And they talk about like um, some of these old wrestlers and how much like drugs and shit they used to do. And it, it's pretty, it's pretty entertaining. I don't, I don't know. I've been past month. I've been getting into wrestling. Um, not the new shit really. I mean, I watch it occasionally, but. Like, well, maybe uh, is it because maybe your kids are getting to the age where they like that stuff yeah. and you can watch it? Yeah. So it's kind of getting me back into it, and I've been uh, jumping back into some of the old stuff. So I've been looking up documentaries about um, – um, so one of my favorite wrestlers is uh, Ravishing Rick Rude, and he is uh, – I was looking up old videos of him on uh, Regis and Kathy Lee, and that was freaking hysterical, dude. Like he was trying to like – make out with Kathy Lee the whole time ravishing Rick Rude. Oh hell yeah. And uh man, it was it was a different time, let's just say that. It was uh I think it was eighty nine when uh that was out. But uh yeah man. Uh it's it's pretty entertaining. Um some of these old uh some of these old wrestling characters. So that's pretty much all I've been watching. Randy Macho Man Savage it was Rick Rude in the cage of death. Was that uh liar liar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rick- this, can't you see the boy must grow to be a warrior? <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> uh, so the only thing I'll talk about that um, is of note, and I, you tell me, was this movie was was Rock and Roll High School forever in theaters? Or is that is that STV? No, that's right. That's STV. So maybe that's one we could do for an STV series. But so I don't know how much I should really talk about it. Uh, the have only, have I guess, you watched it yet? I watched it. I tell okay. you, I've been I've been on an STV kick. I I finally watched it. I finally did this week or last week. Well, I'm and, dying uh, to talk. Well, well, let's do that next week because I'm dying to talk to you about that. You want to do that one next week? 
All right, yeah. we can do that one next week. We'll do mine next week, and then we'll do yours. Then we'll do heist. Then we'll do heist. heist. Tea. You guys got to let it. Maybe these people are going to be tired of, like, these bullshit movies no one's ever seen. <laughs> hey, they can watch them on YouTube, though. I yeah, they're easy to watch, uh, and obviously they're on YouTube, so nobody's like flagging them, or they're like maybe they're you know a lot of these two left shoes productions probably doesn't exist anymore. For example, for all we know, so like these companies might be defunct, and it's like I don't know, they're maybe we could watch them together. I don't know, but uh, so you don't want me to tell you anything about it. I would love to reach out to Leanne Curtis and talk to her too. Yeah, oh, bring it full circle. Like, hey, yeah. you don't remember us, but uh, you talk does. to I, I talked to her on on Inst or. Facebook occasionally. She's like, uh, well, why not? So wait, wait, okay, occasionally. When's the last time you said something? She is. I've like liked certain things on like Instagram, and she's like responded or whatever, and you know. So what? When's the last time you had any kind of connection well, with her? I'm not as connected as Nate was. I mean, Nate. I think he has her phone number. He talks to her occasionally on the phone. So. so I'm not Maybe we could have Leanne Curtis part two all these years later. Maybe we could do it. Uh, hmm. Something to do with the movie. I wonder if she would watch it with us. I don't know. Remember how much time she gave us that last time? She, but the thing is, is like, look, technology's come a long way. If you listen to that interview now, it's terrible because there's echo everywhere. These guys were doing that interview without wearing cans or headphones. And so everybody's echoing all over the place. And she's got like, she's like in a bird sanctuary or something. There's like birds yeah. everywhere. Uh, but I wonder, you know, if she could just get on a, everybody's got access to cameras now. Oh, yeah. Is she, I'm going to just send her the link on her phone and she can watch you know, talk to us. Yeah. Interesting. Well, yeah. Believe me. Silhouette. The, the scene with furlong gets toe pokes on the job. I don't do that. I, I just want furlong. I want furlong. Furlong has done tons of STV at this point. Yeah. I, it kind of, it kind of makes you wish we had, um, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like this whole fucking video series could be STV stuff. There's so much. And I, I was kind of thinking about that. Like maybe I should, Maybe I should. Maybe we should work on something that's strictly straight to video. I wonder if there's like a market for that. Give like, me, uh, <laughs> give me a little snippet of something. Give me a little snippet of something you liked in Rock and Roll High School Forever. Well, uh, a, part, a part. Is there a part that stuck out or that you want to talk about? Yeah, I, I guess the no. I, I don't want to talk about it too much. I'll tell you the the part that, that comes to mind is the whole the fridge. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, <laughs> the dancing and stuff like that. But I will just For say, worship. yeah, yeah. I will say that there's, cl I, I, you've been talking about that damn movie since I met you, like twenty mm. plus, twenty something years ago. But let me tell you, I kind of regret not watching it like freshman year in high school, or because you, you know, you could have shown it to me, and you've been talking about it, talking about it. I, I can't believe I've known you this long, and you've talked about it so much, and I just now all these later years later watched it and i say this because i wish i would have watched it 20 years ago because okay. maybe maybe i would now have like an appreciated value for it because it would be yeah. nostalgic for me mm -hmm. i watched it and let's just say i don't like it like you do because you have this sentimental attachment to it yeah. i'm just saying i wish i would have watched it as early as i could have uh because i would probably feel differently about it, it. to run on an eight like i my dad lived in atlanta we flew down there and he had HBO like we didn't have HBO in my house and we used to record all the movies that came on HBO and then we bring the VHSs back to where I live now with my mom. Mm -hmm. So and that was on there and we watched it probably a 100 times. So and I've probably seen that movie, you know, two, three hundred times. I love I loved it so much back then just because I mean you're a kid so yeah you just sponged it you yeah. absorbed it I I did I like the soundtrack I thought it was I I liked the I like the vibe of it the early 90s vibe of it uh yeah no uh but we'll get into that we can do that next yeah. week but yeah. it's a lot of fun and uh but let's not waste any time I I, I don't know man I'm I kind of like this idea this is something I'd like to try uh I like these focused episodes now before it's fun to have the bullshit episodes, but I'm kind of digging this. Hey, let's watch this movie. Let's talk about this movie. Yeah. Let's not spend too much time on news unless you guys in the chat have something you want to talk about. Let's we, just we get can to talk the... about a few things in the news if you want, like stuff that's coming out because there's it, some pretty big titles that got announced. What got announced? I remember what got announced this week. Bad boys. Oh yeah. Coming out the keynote. That's going to be, I, I know it's, 
tempting to wait for the Kino sales, but I'm going to probably not wait on that one because I want to ensure I get a slip. You know, I mean, I might. There's plenty of movies that still have slips by the time a Kino sale rolls around, so it might not be a thing. But I, I like the movie so much, and it, I've just been watching that movie for decades now that I, I'll just jump on that. I'll pay whatever. I'll pay the 28 bucks or whatever they want for it. So it just got announced today that uh, Beverly Hills Ninja is coming out. Is that is that in 4K or? Is oh, that... Chris Farley, Beverly Hills Ninja. Yeah. Dude, oh, yeah. Uh, first off, uh, before we move on, uh, that's a Rick Rosenthal film, The Bad Boys, which he directed mm-hmm. Halloween Two, right? Yeah. So it it just goes to show, man. Like, there's so many, there's so many awesome movies that kind of had. Not one hit wonders because I know people love Halloween too, but you know he also did Halloween Resurrection. But anyway, like, uh, he's, but he's a horror guy. That, but I mean, like, there's there's so many movies that weren't by directors that had like this huge repertoire of repeated success. And you know, I think of a movie like uh, Midnight Run, amazing mm. movie. I love that movie. I still got to pick that up on the 4K of that. Is that Kino? That might be. A I Kino. don't know. It it's out. Be. Somebody have it out. It seems like a Kino release, but mm-hmm. it's so great. And you watch that movie and you're like, this has to be like by a huge director. It's got to be one of these bit. And it's not. It's by a guy. He didn't do anything else. It's like he just got that. Yeah. One time. That fucking little giants yeah. thing. And uh, I feel like there's. I don't know. There's so many great movies like that that are by no name directors. And uh, that and bad boys is one of those flicks for sure. Uh, and then also, what was the movie I, I interrupted I, you? What I was love, the other movie? Uh, after Bad Boys, <laughs> Beverly Hills Ninja. Oh yeah, know, who, who's putting it out? The Sony. I don't know if that's a 4K or Blu-ray, but I mean, I think a Blu-ray already came out for that, didn't it? Uh, I don't know. I I, I have a so, I have a soft spot for uh, Beverly Hills Ninja. I, I like it too. Yeah, it's I don't so know slapstick, why. stupid, dude. I yeah. love it. It was it was his first foray into starring without somebody else, like without a David Spade or even like without with a Matthew Perry or whatever. That fucking movie's terrible with, with that almost heroes. So bad. It's bad. It's bad, yeah. it's, it's bad. But anyway, so like Beverly Hills Ninja came out and that was like the first movie without Spade because they were kind of attached to the hip and it's so stupid. It's funny. Like, you, you, it, it's awesome. You really yeah. have to turn your brain off of the door. Uh, what? Dr. Giggle said R.I.P. Eddie Furlong. What? No, don't you fuck with us. Come on. Don't bullshit me. Let's see. Now now you're gonna now you're gonna make me look. See, I'm falling for it. It, it, it better it better not be Dr. Because he Giggle. hasn't done our podcast yet. <laughs> that is that so I thought he was dude? clean. Is that selfish of me, man? I feel like we will if he if that really happened, I feel like we uh, willed it into existence. Because we we talk well, but you know oh, it, he said, Oh, oh sorry, I met Roger Corman. Oh yeah, he scared me for a second there. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know we're talking about Robert Patrick tonight, and you Look bring at that. up Woody Furlong. Yuck, He's yuck, yuck, yuck. He got me at least. He man. got I I feel like I have to check on him every day. And I don't want to feel like we have willed it to existence because the odds are if he dies prematurely, we talk about him every single episode. So it's always going to link up. Like, is this the day? Is this the week? But uh, we, we got to get him on the show. Have you reached out to Eddie? I, I didn't. I'm my bad. But I looked at I looked at channels to do so. And I might have to jump through a few hoops. I, I kind of like – because it. I had to like – the only people I can talk to, I think – is I can is his uh, p- publicist maybe, and I found like a, a ch- it's not like an it's not the kind of channel I would want to go through. So it was pretty much at the point where like I feel like I got to get IMDb Pro again to get some better contacts because I the channel I was going to be able to go through it was more like um, appearance inquiries. It wasn't press, so it's possible someone like that could have like forward me to the right place. But I I decided to step back and like let me calculate my message and what I'm going to say. But I just never did. But I'll do it. I gotta get do, IMDb Pro again because that'll have his, that'll have his even industry. If you have folks. to throw him a few bucks, let me know, man. Because I mean, he's he's on our Mount Rushmore. I'd love to talk to Eddie, dude. Yeah. Anybody in the chat want to donate like a crack rock so we can hang that? You know, maybe maybe that's his price. No, I'm just I'll kidding. That, <laughs> Eddie's clean. Eddie's yeah. clean. He's yeah. looking great, ish. And uh, you know. He's doing love. interviews now. I'd love to talk to him, man. Yeah, I know. So yeah, I I. I'll revisit that again this weekend. I just got to get IMDb Pro. 
again. Uh, but hey, really quick, this is a good opportunity. I, I forgot to say hi to people in the chat. I want to remind everybody, we do these live 8 p.m. every Wednesday. Uh, join us. Yeah, join in the chat. Otherwise, I put up the videos the following week. But what's up? Uh, we got our we got our regular boys here. Blaine. We got Silhouette. We got Doctor Giggles. We got Doctor Giggles trolling us and breaking my heart with news. Got of, Tim. Uh, Tim's in here. What's up, everybody? Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. So sorry, going through all this stuff. But yeah. Anyway, let's. Uh, are you ready for segments? Or is there any other, yeah. is there any other releases coming out? You said all these releases uh, you named too. Uh, Cannibal Apocalypse, which oh yeah, I'm yeah, the John the, the Saxon, the Saxon movies the are Saxon coming out. Saxon Our Beach, yeah. So yeah, you uh, have to the Saxon shit. That's cool. All right, so keep your eyes on that. Uh, did anybody take part in the Shout Factory sales? I know we talked about that a little I bit did. last week. I hate. God, I, I I get it. The boutique labels and I and especially the sale times. It's going to be like three weeks, four weeks before I even fulfill the orders and they start. I, I forgot I ordered something from that. That's the best way to do it is to forget and get a nice surprise in the mail because, you know, you're like it's been over a week, week and a half. And it's like they don't even fulfill the orders. And uh, I, I, I really think I've always thought that they just need to hire more people. I know easier said than done, but they literally would like have one person answering oh, emails. One person still going on for four more hours. So. Get on it if you need to. Ah, oh, man, I was so tempted, dude. I I got that uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space steel book, and the Amazon listing was misleading because it shows it had a slip case over the steel book. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. It doesn't, which most shout stuff does. It shout stuff does in the steel books, mm -hmm. but the but the picture on Amazon shows it does. And then I got it. I'm like, oh, not that it really matters, but. I really love that old cover. I'm not about the double dipping life anymore. In fact, I keep selling off stuff I have extra copies of. But I had to stop myself from buying the the slip cover version because I want that. And I and if I did, I would just keep this one shrink wrapped. Um, and then because I love I love the cover and I and I would I would totally hang up the poster of the clown, you know, twirling the planet like a basketball. But I'm trying to like you know stop myself. But um, no, I think I got uh, what did I get? I got the blob because I didn't have that. I was waiting for that to go 20 bucks. I got pumpkin head and I got uh, um, dead zone on 4k. So yeah. Well, rock on. Well, we can show off that stuff when it actually arrives in the mail next year. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Uh, but all right, let's go ahead and get uh, started with some segments. Let's do it. Time to challenge Todd. I am closing the chat. Yeah. Close it. All right, you guys in the chat, please play along. All right, so I, I was choked on myself. <laughs> Name that Kino. I've got, I've got, I, I think I've actually got five slides. The fourth one is a gimme, and the fifth one's just for fun and added commentary. So, you know, you got to get it by that. You got to get it by that fourth one. Any guesses in the chat? Todd can't see. The mask. No, I could see where you're coming from, though, there. Dick Tracy. No. Um, American Psycho. No. Mm. Gosh, man, I got this pimple underneath my lip under the skin, dude. Freaking hurts right on the lip line. Yeah, Sorry, that's, guys. that's the worst. Thinking um, loud. So it looks it looks like a band, a restaurant, and a band. Could be. Um. Goodfellas. Is it a mobster movie? Could be. Now it's like, ass though too. Looks Sorry. like a, the setting. Um. Carlito's Way. No. No, that's um, not ben, that's not the club in Carlito's Way, but I'm trying to think of uh, kind of like Vegas. Eh. No, this is not Vegas. This is this is New York. Um, I'm gonna need another one. Yeah, I mean these are admittedly hard on the first ones, but you know, it gets you thinking at least. Name that Kino. Dr. Giggles, that is not correct. Desperado. 
no, I see, I see where we're coming from there, but that's not a guitar case. <laughs> and I, and I, and I believe that's, I don't know. That's, there's no automobiles in Desperado. Was there? Maybe there was. Yeah, there was. But regardless. Um, nowhere to run. I like where your mind's at. You're thinking like, oh, I was thinking like uh hard target. Like you're looking at that trench coat. Like, oh, it's hard yeah. target. Oh, yeah. but it's not. Oh. Uh, first person to to beat Riverman at this game and get it right in the chat gets a blowjob from Riverman. Oh God. Um, if you stump them on all, if one person stumps them on all three, he will throat and swallow. No, it's a good guess, Doctor Giggles. Uh, let's see. Uh... Man, it's hard. How many do I get? I mean, it's this, definitely it, this it's, is it, the second one. They look. I am turning up the heat a little bit, but on this this week, but I don't think they. I think I did a fairly decent job on making each slide incrementally harder because at least that's still dawn. No. So it looks I, like uh, the, the third Arizona one. Desert, the third the one is going to be a little easier. It's an absolute gimme, and it, you're done. You don't, you have to get it within the next one, because the fourth one's always going to be a gimme, even though I got five. No, Doctor Giggles is throwing out the guesses, but they're not right yet. This is something I've seen. Absolutely, I I I'm not like you, man. I fact check. I I, I there's there's tons of flicks that I want to do, but I can't be sure if you've seen or not. I don't want to assume, and you don't always have everything marked on Letterbox, so I, I don't. I don't I don't risk it. I don't risk it if I don't know. El Mariachi? No. Dr. Giggles, it is not the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I don't know. Need another one. All right. This you have to get it on this one, but it okay. is gonna get a little bit easier. Name that Kino. Major League. Yeah. Okay, Major League. All right, so Yeah. <laughs> and then uh my favorite line of the whole movie. Want me to drag him outside, kick the shit out of him? I love it, dude. <laughs> it's, it's funny. It's funny you brought this one up because I just watched Major League Two a few weeks ago. Yeah, I almost did part two. I'm glad I picked the first one then. So, do you agree that from one, two, three, and four, they were incremented? Like mm -hmm. each one was a little okay. So there's that. Let's go ahead and uh, it, was fair. it was fair. Let's go ahead and bring up round two. Because uh, two was um, uh, what's his name? Omar Epps, dude. Oh, that was take it. Yeah, yeah. Snipes. Willie Mays Hayes. Yeah. Willie Mays Hayes. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can crank up the heat here. This is another. I, I think I nailed this one out of the park as well. Where it's increment. I'd say this one is incrementally, just like the last one. Where by the time you get to the third one, it's going to start scratching your brain a little more, and the fourth one's going to give it away. So. All right, so let's go ahead and share it, guys. You guys still have an opportunity to get the your the tip of your dick kiss or something. Let's let's beat them. All right, um, Todd, name it the Kino, please. Yeah, Ugh. yeah, Doctor Get, dude, Blaine, that is so funny. Don't you still have the chat closed, right? Yeah, it's so funny that what you just guessed, because that's our third one. Mm. That's so funny. Well, somewhat. You'll see. Uh, Doctor Giggles, it's not Batman eighty nine. Love that Joker. <laughs> Video drum, nope. All hell the new flesh, nope. I don't know. I need another one. Yeah, I, I mean, like one. I said, it's 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 kind of scaled with the last one. All right, name that Kino. Bit easier. Hackers. That's a great guess because that's what this fucking looks like, doesn't it? It does totally like some that <laughs> like fucking guy in the hat, dude. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not hackers. It's a good guess though. Um, faculty. No. It's 
great movie though. The best of the Dimension uh, Dawson's Creek era horror movies. The Faculty, love it. Well, besides the first Scream. Another Robert Patrick movie, by the way. There you go. Uh, let me think. I know, I know, I've seen this character before. I, I guarantee you've seen these movies. I, it's a hundred percent. There's no doubts. I know you have. So you've seen them all. This is this is definitely nineties. I'm trying to. The fashion kind of gives that away. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Yeah, they... you got it, Gushido. Gushido got it. Hell yeah. Um, Van Wilder. Uh, no, you got to suck Gushido's dick. I'm sorry, he got it. Sorry, Gushy. Um, <laughs> that was a good guess too, uh, Blaine. But no, I need another one. Last one. Okay, so the third one, it's a little easier, but we'll see if you if it triggers you. Name the Kino. <laughs> this guy's got a funny line. That's why I think it should trigger. Grandma's him. boy. No, it does look like Alan Colbert, though. Kind of like, um, no. Yeah, Gashido already got it, though. Good job. The fourth one's like, an ad. What's that? This is a comedy. Am I allowed to tell you this stuff? No, I was no. I I can't. Uh, I, accepted. I can't. No. <laughs> what is? Ask me about my wiener. Was that accepted? <laughs> Jonah Hill, not an early movie. To as the uh, how high? No. <laughs> Mr. Dean Kane, sir, that movie sucks. Um, uh, <laughs> Dr. Kiggles, Home Alone 7, The Revenge of Marv. That does look like methed out Marv, doesn't it? <laughs> God, okay, He's making okay. a Jake Busey face. Yeah, it does look like Jake Busey. Would you fuck Jake Busey to get to Gary? Probably, Todd. Probably would. Yeah. I don't know why. Not that I want to like imagine any of this, but I just bet, like, dude, if Gary dropped trowel, dude, his dick stinks, dude. I bet he just smells. It smells like he doesn't bathe, dude, and he just sits if, in his own filth, dude. If he didn't get in that motorcycle accident, that guy would be, I mean, one of the best actors ever. Yeah. I bet he just like swims in his own like buttered sausage stew, dude, running down his legs. He probably just reeks. But. Waiting? No. Waiting to? I, I have a feeling it sounds like you're tapping out on this one, but go ahead and guess if you want to keep um, guessing. Office space? No. <laughs> I'm trying to think of restaurants. Like restaurant movies. Mm. Yeah, Ishmael, you got it as well. Um Gushido actually got it before you. He got it a, a few minutes back. I, 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 you gotta give it to me. I don't, I don't know it. All right, Todd, name that obvious Kino. You forfeit this round. Oh my God. Can I watch ISIS? Can I watch? Oh, <laughs> you did that. You did uh, Demon Knight last week, and you did Bordello <laughs> Blood this week. Look at that, dude. <laughs> yeah. I, this movie is shitty, but I like it. I I, I, was fun, dude. I remember growing up, I always, I for some reason favored this one. They used to play this one on Comedy Central because mm -hmm. it's got Dennis Miller and it's more of a comedy. Yeah, uh, Demon Knight's not a comedy, no. but uh, this movie's like slapsticky and silly. And Dennis Miller, love him or hate him, I I always kind of liked him. I liked uh, him when I was younger. Yeah, I mean, but this movie is silly. It's it's a I guess a campy horror movie, but it's more comedy than anything. And like I said, they played on Comedy Central. And uh, but as I've gotten older, I definitely think Demon Knight's the better movie because it feels a little bit more like the show. I can't imagine this movie being in the show. Like you know what I mean? This no, I, this no. this doesn't feel like an episode. Hey, Stitch, can I watch? He's like, can I watch? Ah. <laughs> He's a gray vampire, dude. Yeah. Uh, so, 
this movie stars bootleg Donna DiErico, and she hires this private dick here uh, to h- find her brother, uh, Corey Feldman, who disappeared after attending a bordello. But, yeah. That's a good one. You got me on that. All right. So, last one. Let's see if he can uh, totally redeem himself. Yeah. You owe... You owe Gushy a couple of back alley favors, Todd. We'll just put it on your tab. Yep. Um, we'll see if uh, he can go for a twofer. All right, Todd. Name that Kino, please. Uh... Anybody in the chat? It's not Bad Boys. It's Bad Boys 2. Nope. Um, what's that? <laughs> no. Oh, God, this. I think I should know this. I you've seen all these movies, so you know you take that. Yeah, as a. I need another one. All right, nobody in the chat's got it yet. Let's see, name that Kino. Bad boys. No, you said bad boys one and two already, and then Doctor Giggles also guessed bad boys, and now you guess bad boys again. It's the not original, bad boys. The original bad boys. Oh no, no, it's not that one either. Yeah, okay. specify that w- that shit wouldn't fly on Jeopardy. <laughs> it's not Bad Boys Two, Doctor Giggles. It's not Bad Boys for Life. It's not that new Bad Boys coming out either. Okay, so go. now now this is a prison movie. They're behind bars. I would think. Um, Dangerous Minds. There's no prison in Dangerous Minds. It's just a troubled school, dude, with uh, soon-to-be prisoners. Prisoners <laughs> in the making. I have a chicken, a whole one. I haven't seen Dangerous Minds in a long time, dude, and it's not I really. To... I used to love that movie when I was a kid. You want them to listen to you? Get them, get, uh, get, get them video. Like, make them get it. When they're on the a roller video. coaster, dude. I was like, yeah. oh, that teacher's so cool. <laughs> if you want the respect of everybody, you got to get the respect of Emilio. Mm. I, uh, I, uh, I remember that movie's not on Blu-ray. That movie's not, that it's not out anywhere, which is weird. Cause it was a studio yeah. release and the only way you can watch it. It's one of those, it, I, they do like the, um, Miramax movie or something. They do. They totally do the capitalism supply and demand thing with those movies that are like not around because to rent it it's like 25 bucks oh, to rent Jesus. like a like i'm not paying that i probably but went up after coolio passed away maybe anyway no that's a good guess blaine it is not correct it is not know. correct i don't know I no good one. no do good. i get one more you get one last one and it's okay. gonna get like it gets a little easier okay name that kino No, it's not the Godfather's Pizza guy. Oh, Dr. Giggles coming at me with a Sack Slappers 8? No, it's not. Um, Casino? Goodfellas? He's got a Paul Sorvino energy about him, but that's not Paul Sorvino, so it's not. Uh... I'm trying to think what he's wearing. He looks like he's tuxedo. Dark Knight, Batman, Batman Returns. Nope. You got me. I don't know this one. This one's even harder than this, the last one, I think. Uh, Yep. Todd, name that obvious Kino. You lost. You got one out of three. Eh, 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 eh. Cop. 
at be specific uh two yeah two where he's like in the yeah. house and uh <laughs> okay yeah uh, that, that that's a good one but that's hard that's that is a good one because i used to Look, watch this all the time man so this is how i do this game when their movies i know todd has seen i have to make them kind of challenging mm -hmm. that's just how you got to do it yeah this is kind of hard but it's a bank heist right yeah yeah um this is fair game because it's the it's the guard in the bank yeah and then this is the the fucking the police guy the guy that's riding her ass the whole time in this movie yeah, right yeah. and um with the mayor or whatever and he's you know in there a lot and then of course this scene's like in every damn movie except for the third one because this fucker's not in the third one here but yeah. um yeah all right so that's what, blaine wait did you guess it because somebody guessed Somebody guessed um, Beverly Hills Cop on the last one. And remember I stopped and said, oh, it's so funny you say that because that's that's my next one. Let's see where it is. Uh, yeah. Blaine, you guessed Beverly Hills Cop when we were on Bordello of Blood. I the actually like the, I like the third one, too, even though people think it's shitty. I, I liked that when I was younger. I'm going to put I need your to comments on Blast. You guessed it when we were on board of blood. That does not count. I don't. T I don't accept psychic guesses for the future. But uh, no. Uh, three. You ever watch those? I've seen them all. Yeah, they're good, man. Three. Okay, so they. I pretty much like them in descending order. Yeah, oh, I do too. Sorry, I. And I. Yeah, the first one's the best. The second one is comparable, but it's not quite as good as the first one. The third one's fine. It just doesn't feel like Beverly Hills Cop, dude. Like, it, you don't have... Well, it's 90s, dude. I mean, it's totally I, different. I know the tone's a little different because it's like 94, but you got Judge Reinhold, but you don't have the other guy. And then you don't have... Uh, you have you Sandler's. Don't, you, have beep, 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 beep. you don't You don't have uh, Ronnie Cox, a.k.a. Cohagen, in this one. Even though he didn't die in the second one, you'd think... And he's, and he's still alive today. So where's Ronnie Cox? Why didn't they get him? You know, I, I Bridget Nielsen is, or not? What was her name? She, Bridget, she was in the second one. Bridget Nielsen's Bridget, the, Bridget Nielsen, yeah, yeah. And but the third, each one had a different director, and the third one though, it just isn't as silly as the first two. Like the comedy's not really there. Um, it's not really the same, and uh, it just doesn't. I don't know. I don't know what it is. It doesn't feel quite the it, same. But it doesn't. But I mean, kids like it more because it's at amusement park and that. That's that's why I liked it when I was a kid so much. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting, but uh, yeah, it's so I would I if I had to rate them, I would say first one's a seven, second one's a six, third one's probably a five, um, maybe a six, you know, but it's just not. I would then, go eight, seven, six for me. Yeah, I, I all of these ratings are on the cusp of being. Like either a seven or eight or six or a seven. So yeah, and then the uh, the I rewatched all of them recently to get prepared for the fourth one coming out. When is that coming out? I think July. In theaters? No, it's a Netflix. Okay, it's going straight to Netflix, which is kind of a. I mean, it's fine. I'll get to watch it right away. But uh, but have you seen the trailer for that? No, I haven't. It it's legit. It it, it really. And it's got all the guys in it again. It's got the guy, the, the, the guys that weren't in the third one. Like I, that's why I don't understand why they removed so much of the classic cast. Yeah, they brought back Serge, but uh, which he's hilarious. He's a, uh, his scenes are so funny yeah, in the third guy one. Is, yeah, guy Bronson Pinchot. Yeah. But uh, I just don't know why they got rid of some of the other cast members that they shouldn't have. But this one is this one actually feels like in the trailer. It's even got like a scene of them, like he's in the back seat of the car and the two guys and. Uh, I think they they've got Joseph Gordon Levitt added to the cast. Uh, I don't know if Ronnie Cox is in it, but Ronnie Cox is still alive. Cohagen, yeah, yeah. So it's like I hope they got him uh, yeah. because I think there's like just unresolved. Because in the second one, he's like on his deathbed and he pulls through, and he's not even in the third one. You don't really get any resolution with him and their friendship. I don't really dig that in the third one, and uh, and Ronnie Cox, which is so funny because. He seems like he's super old, but in the first Beverly Hill Cop, he's like fucking forty three, but he looks so Are old. Are you kidding me, dude? Yeah, he's not. He's you think he, he would be hundred, but no, he's alive. He is like wow. fucking. He's he's like eighty now. He was he was so young, and he just played old so well. 
I don't know. Yeah, it makes you feel like crap because. Yeah, Runny Cox. <laughs> That's his, his porno name. All right, so guys, we need to get into the meat of our topic. We're going to talk about Zero Tolerance, uh, a.k.a. Straight to Video, uh, Death Wish, kind of. It's a, it's, a, it's a Death Wish. It's a revenge movie. Guy yeah, gets his, yeah. his, his wife and kids killed, and then he's seeking vigilante justice. It's it's just one of those flicks. But uh, I don't know if we... we so basically, it, it's he's a... Um, FBI special agent. yeah fbi agents and it starts off they're pursuing um they're gonna go apprehend uh titus wolliford is his name i think and he plays bosch it's a young bosch yeah he's he's apprehending him he's in there they're going there to pick him up when they go and pick him up he's got some cronies that are waiting to pick him up from them and they're driving they attack him there's like a a car chase and a gunfight ensues uh long story short titus gets away kills Every FBI agent except for Robert Patrick. Uh, Robert Patrick is apprehended, and uh, they let him know, hey, look, these other guys that we're working with, I guess it's like, you know, the entire city of Las Vegas is like, it's like a four-headed hydra. There's like these four mafia families. I'm guessing they're four different, I don't know if they're one of the same or if they're four groups that work together, but one of them is fucking Mick Fleetwood from Fleetwood yep. Mac. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Hey, and and then like um yeah yeah there's like these four like head of these gang cartels but they're all connected miles and, o, miles o'keefe who is uh who looks like caitlin jenner dude oh I, no yeah that guy i, I was kept, gonna say i kept thinking it's caitlin jenner i kept doing a, i kept doing the double take i'm like that is caitlin jenner dude that's yeah. so funny i i didn't make any notes but when i was watching it because i watched it last week so it's not like super fresh but yeah. uh i literally made a note on my phone mention caitlin jenner mm -hmm. that's so funny dude yeah yeah it's it's creepy and, and I, I love and, when caitlin gets killed at the end <laughs> and some, some somewhere out there that actor's like what the fuck caitlin looks like me it's not the other <laughs> way around I was this guy before uh, he, he was a she. She was a he. He was, a she. but um, anyway. So you know, uh, he's got some boys on the other end. All the, these network of you know mobsters are all working together, and they're like, "Oh, we got your family." And he's like, "You better, you better help get me through uh, customs. You got to help because uh, I don't know what did they pick him up in Mexico? I, I yeah, they had so to have." They had to, so, because that was the whole thing. It's like, hey, I've got you. You get me through customs. If anybody can do it, it's you, which is kind of weird logic. I get it. I guess if anybody could do it, it's him. But the fact that they actually get some through customs on that bullshit is kind of, I guess it's a pre-9-11 world. I don't know. It's So the cronies actually get him on the phone with his wife saying that they have his wife yes. hostage. They talk to her, and then they, they hang up the him. phone. And then yeah. afterwards... They, they they kill, they kill the wife him. They, they kill him yeah. right away. And yeah. so at this point, I I really do think Titus Welliford Bosch he really doesn't know they're dead. I think I, I it, it's it's kind of like I don't I don't know I don't know if who gave the order because well, they got mad at him. I don't know who gave the order because Titus is the biggest piece of shit in the movie, dude. He was great. Yeah. He, so he was the best part. Regardless, the whole time it keeps cutting back and forth to like the the family in their home, and then back to Titus. Like your family will be safe. You gotta if you get me across the border, we'll let your family go. Cuts back and they're getting shot down. So the whole so they you know it's there's no like mystery there for the viewer. They let us know right then that he's lying and they're dead. Uh, so anyway, Robert Patrick goes along with it. He takes him through customs. He pulls some shit out of his ass to actually get him through customs. Like, oh, I don't know. He pulls some, like, it's been a long day. You kidding me? It's like, I'm an FBI agent. Let me through. I'm fucking dealing with it. I wait this long line. All right, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. It's like, it's like that's not how it works. But um, anyway, he gets him there and they're in Vegas. And it, correct me if I'm wrong. So they're in a car. They're heading towards uh, the other crime guys, whatever casino they're at. Yep, Mick Fleetwood's yep. working out, and the Fleetwood's they, casino. Yeah, but they, but for some reason, there's a new guy who acts all goofy, and he's like a comedian, right? He, he's another one of the mobsters. He's another one of the mobsters, and he's like telling all these stupid jokes. And yeah, actually, the joke is actually kind of funny. Do you remember what it was? Uh, he was like, um, it was something about an FBI agent. Uh, oh, what's uh? Something like, what's the difference between an FBI agent and a piece of shit or something? Uh, you tell me. Guy, 
He's like, I don't know what. He's like, oh, you tell me. You're like, oh, yeah. I, I, I don't remember what it was. I probably bought it. Was it was that. I think that was it. Too. But it, it was funnier. But anyway, yeah, so was, you know. they arrive at the casino. And for some reason beyond me, Titus Welliford gets out. And so does the comedian. And they leave him in the car. And the comedian is going to blow up the car. So well, nobody they, knows. They, they have the two guys out, out, out there watching him. I don't know why he wouldn't get out, but he finally saw that there's people watching him in the car. Yeah. Oh, was there? Because <laughs> yeah, I was sitting there. there. There's two guys at the front of the car, the drivers. Because I was sitting there thinking, like, why wouldn't? What's keeping him from just running out of this car? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Well, even even if there's people in the driver, this is like a limo or something, right? Yeah. It's like he could just run away. He's in the middle of Vegas, the busy strip. It's like yeah. even if these people were in the front seat are going to be like, oh, get him. He could run away. So uh, comedian mobster and then uh, Titus Williford go into the casino and they're talking to Mick Fleetwood and they're basically doing their bad guy shtick of like, Haha, like, you know, he won't be long. And like they're going to blow him up. They hit a detonator. I don't really remember what triggered robert patrick in the car to notice that because he got out as it was exploding and his ass got flung dude he he saw he saw the driver uh, the two drivers get out or they're yeah. out and they started running away from the car yeah so like or oh and walking that's the, away quickly yeah and he's like, walking Whoa. away quickly and that's weird because it's like what a flawed swiss cheese plan because uh even if there wasn't a bomb and even if he wasn't suspicious the second those fuckers are leaving the car he's gonna leave but I guess I guess you could argue that um, why would he leave when they have his kids? Yeah, I guess you could argue that he still thinks yeah. he has her kids. I guess that's all I had to go off of. Anyway, whatever. He runs out. The fucking bomb blows. I think it throws him around like a rag doll. Uh, he's slightly injured. He runs away, and uh, obviously the dude that did the bomb he fucked up. Mick Fleetwood's not pleased. T-1000 runs away. He's like in an alleyway. He gets a call from one of his cop buddies, and he's like, you got to check on my family. Come, I can come pick you up. And if and she tells him, like, oh, they're dead, basically. Yeah. Uh, and then he starts breaking down, crying right there. And uh, then he goes, he goes back to the cop station. They fire his ass. Don't they? They fire him right away. They why, they fire him? Or they tell him to take some time off? Uh, yeah, take fun. yeah. Give me your badge. Take time off because yeah, I'm well, worried if, about him. Fi fire a guy. Fire a guy. Just lose his family. Any fucking take his job, dude. Uh, well, I mean, well, they said take time. Off. He's like, you're not in the case, you know. That's yeah, of yeah. Thing, so. And then he's all depressed. He's burying himself in the bottle. The same female cop comes over to his house to try and console him, and he's clearly trying to compliment. He's he's contemplating suicide. The S word, yeah. sorry. And then, uh, you know, she's trying to talk him out of it, blah, blah, blah. That whole thing happens. And then Titus Williford and the mobster guys show up at the house and to, to finish the job. Because, yeah, because they catch it on the news. Mick Fleetwood. I think Mick Fleetwood's, like, with his bitches or whatever. And he sees on the news the story about the cop. And then he's like, what the hell? And he makes a phone call. And then they meet the guy who failed the botched bomb thing. And then, you know, Titus fucking shoots him or whatever. Uh yeah, and then it just becomes like a death wish knockoff where he's like trying to pick them all apart. And uh, mm -hmm. it's oh, one of the mobsters too is that uh, Rastafarian guy from the Michael Jackson black or white video. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that that was like in everything that called for a guy with dreadlocks in the '90s. He's got that like interesting stripe pattern in his be uh, beard. But uh, you, you didn't talk about the comedian's uh, one liner. No, what it was, was it? so bad. Uh, so Titus. Titus was like, they have him pretty much dead to rights, or like because he botched the uh, assassination attempt. Yeah, and he was like, but is that really his fault, or is it Titus? Whose fault is that? Because he, well, he left the car. He didn't. He didn't, or he went back, and he he didn't tell him that he was, you know, not dead. Why not just take? Why not? Why not just old fashioned take him out to a field and toss him? It doesn't make sense why they were trying to. Oh no, let's just blow up a car in the middle of the fucking strip. The middle so, of fucking Fremont Street, right outside the Gold Nugget or whatever. The comedian was like, uh, they said to him, knock, knock. And he's like, who's there? And he's like, not you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, not, stupid, it's dude. Like, not you. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> but he but he, but he, said it menacingly enough to where you bought it. Like, oh. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that would be total nineties. That would be scary though, dude, because he's like, oh, he's so funny. He's a funny guy, and then like you're the funny guy. It's like and he's like wants to hear a knock knock joke. Like, uh, I don't know. And, At that and, point, go ahead. and then uh, Robert Patrick comes back from revenge, and he goes through. He goes through Las one Vegas, by one, like Mega Man bosses. Which, it's really cool going through Las Vegas and he shoots Fleetwood in the head with a, you know, laser sight or whatever mm. in the uh, middle of his casino. He kills him in his mid- middle of his casino, which sends a shock through the other syndicate guys like this guy fucking killed him in his own casino. Like, ah, oh, this guy, this guy's out for blood. He's reckless. He's got nothing to lose. And then uh, the whole time, Titus is like fearless. Like, uh, and you got fucking Caitlyn Jenner. Like, I don't know, man. He's not gonna stop. He he killed Mick Fleetwood in his own casino in the middle. But uh, buckle well, up, like a Ruth. And Robert Patrick was killing these people next to cars, and every time he shot his gun, the car exploded, which is great. Awesome. Which is the best. I, which would never happen. I mean, I mean that that's so far fetched. Like you're not gonna it, hit the gas tank or anything like that. The coolest, the coolest uh, gun shot car explosion of all time is Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon Two. Yeah, I pr- I'm pretty sure it's two and not three, but I don't know. But like literally, he's like, and he fires off a lot of rounds, like, bum, 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 like he's going for it, like I'm gonna get that fucker, do, 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 do. and it's like yeah. the the tension's blowing up, and he finally blows that shit up. Um, yeah, he made everybody believe you could actually do that, but um, and there's pretty unbelievable scenes where Robert Patrick is shooting people with a six shooter, and he shot like ten times, and he didn't even reload his weapon. But I mean, that's, you know, that's action films in the 90s, which I love. So, yeah, we're not looking for continuity in these movies. No. Like, uh, but yeah, I mean, he, he it's, it's what you think, man. He works his way one by one through all the syndicate guys and then he kills them all. And then how does it end again? Doesn't it doesn't really have any it, it doesn't end with him just killing okay. on his last kill. So and, and this is a fade away. So Titus kidnaps the girl FBI agent that he's uh-huh. working and they go up to Colorado in his cabin or whatever. Mm. And he ends up beating the shit out of him. He's fighting him. And uh, they, he takes him into custody back to the FBI headquarters. Yep. And then he he walks him in. He perp walks him into, you know, there with and, all his FBI. And Titus partners. goes for the gun. Titus is like, goes for the gun. And then he kicks like, him oh. out the window or something. Yeah. And he's like, oh. He kicks him out the window. And then he was like, um. Like job finished or something like that or something stupid like yeah. that. Yeah, and 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 like I don't know what it is. I love it. I love movie logic, but I think not just there, but I'm pretty sure there's a scene. Maybe it's in the scene where they're blowing up. They're like shooting up his house or whatever. Like uh, you know, but he like just jumps through the window like it's made of fucking paper mache, and the glass breaks. He just oh like tucks and rolls. Might and be it a too, dude. At, but at least in T2, they're firing and they're, there's some force there, uh, some inertia. And even at the end when he kicks him, okay, he's at least forcefully kicking a guy, even though it would never break. But at least he's, like, forcing it and we can suspend our disbelief that he hit it hard enough. Like, literally, when he escapes his house, he just barely, like, just jumps and it just <laughs> it makes no sense. Um, but uh, that sugar, sugar glass or whatever it is they make that fake glass out of. But uh, anyway, and that's it, right? Don't we just do we get like uh, this? How does it end? I want to say it fades away. Does he like give a look at the camera? Does he have a gun? What does it do? Uh, Where does it end? I think, I think it gives a um, a shot of Arizona, California. Just, just the, I, uh, I love it, dude. Job's done. Like there you go. Like is it, I imagine because he qu- he quits. He quits right in front of his boss, even yeah. though he never gets arrested for killing all the, which you know. He's a vigilante. I mean, they were the whole time. The Wasn't FBI his boss was like behind letting... him? They wanted him to do that. Yeah, but they were like, and then their whole thing was like, you know, we'll we'll arrest him, like let him fall for it, but like yeah. let him do his job. He's he's taking them all out. Let's let him do this, and then we'll just uh, apprehend him after and make him fucking suffer the consequence. Yeah, that's right. But uh, yeah, so that's that's basically the gist of it. It's not really a heady movie. It's not. It's not. Uh, you know. Nothing that's going to keep you awake at night. It's pretty much by the numbers. It, uh, you know, could have been a Death Wish script, you know, type of thing. But uh, so what was your opinions on it? I enjoyed it, man. It was yeah. fun. It, it reminded me a lot of uh, last week. Um, The whole production value, the cameras and everything like that. It, the, 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 the It's on YouTube. That's the only place you can watch it. It looks like shit, but that's what you're going to get when uh, 
you know it, it looks like ass it looks like real ass actually <laughs> it like, it does, and, yeah it doesn't look great i like a dangerous place better just because feldman was in it dude these youtube videos and i have to, they get ads like every two seconds i was so tempted just to get youtube t plus or whatever it is premium just so i could fucking just get through that movie because it was like every fucking three minutes i had to watch an ad but uh i definitely like a dangerous place better um you know this is okay it was middle of the road you know it was fun i finished it i i, I gave it i think i gave a dangerous place six out of ten i gave this, this a five five out of ten five yeah, and a half a, f a five out of ten is is not great, not bad either. It was it, like fun, I said, dude. I, I enjoyed it. I and then uh, I, Robert Patrick is not a good actor, at least not in no. this. And uh, and but yeah, like I like the performances, and I like Titus is good. Man. I like Titus Mick Fleet. I just look at I just see Mick Fleetwood, but I, I like Mick Fleetwood in this, and I love Caitlyn Jenner. I mean, have him in this. I mean, yeah, and I, I, I'm a sucker for that like Vegas backdrop, even if it's really yeah. Reno or something. Who knows? I, yeah, know, that was but, not Vegas, but yeah, or like uh, was <laughs> wherever that is. I, I dig it, and uh, you know, it's a good time. I like a nice junk food movie. It's all good. They could, they could have wrote better one liners though. That I mean. The, the surprising the liner sucked. I thought, but there was like some. You know, I'm always shocked when I see these like straight to video. They used to pump money into these straight to video movies because it it does it is budgeted. But like, dude, there's like fucking explosions and shit. It they looked have, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they like they blow up. They blow up cars. They blow up. Cars. I'm like, man, like uh, the good old days. Because now the difference is the equivalent to straight to video now is just straight to Netflix, straight to a streamer, and. They don't do practical explosions anymore. Everything's behind a green screen. It's all digital. And uh, it just makes it look extra cheap in these cheap movies when it's all digital and green screen. But back in the day, like, blowing up a real car or a building added a lot of production value. And it's not that... a surprise. They had this money to do this. I mean, this is the same producer as A Dangerous Place. Yeah, the same. It's uh -oh. the same studio. The same yeah. studio, and this the studio that put this out. I keep forgetting what they're called. Um, this was their forte. They put out straight to video movies, and there's a whole bunch, dude. I went down the list that I put on my list. There's like Loren starring Lorenzo Lamas, dude. There's movies starring Eric Estrada, dude. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's the bottom of the barrel. I might watch the Lorenzo Lamas one, but. Uh, yeah, man, I, I, I like it. I like these junk food movies. And this was an example of like, okay, this is this is that type of movie I, that's been done much better by other movies, but it's fun. You know where it's going. You know what you're getting in for. Yeah. It, you, you're just kind of anticipating, okay, how's it going to kill the next guy? How's it going to kill the next guy? And I like how all these guys are shaking in their boots. They're like on these conference calls. Like he's coming to get us. Like you guys are a cartel, right? This yeah, is like it, one vigilante skinny cop. Yeah, like five five mob bosses and like and they, you, you guys, guys. Do, you guys don't have guys like this. This fucking kill this guy, like uh, like why they they were they were quaking in their boots a little too easy. Why? Yeah, me. why for just a regular FBI agent? I mean, this guy isn't anything special. He's just a family man. I mean, come on. Yeah, say that's a nice bike, but uh, exactly. Uh, but anyway, seal of approval. I guess next I, week it was fun, man. I, I'm glad. I'm glad you recommended this because I, I was just, like, I don't know. I just like them because this is all the movies I used to watch as a kid. We used to. I don't know why, dude. We'd go to the rental store and we would rent this dog shit. If it, it'd be like we'd rent whatever movie had a guy with a gun on the the front and like out of time or like zero tolerance, and it didn't matter if it was like I don't know. It didn't have to be like a theatrical movie. Like, oh, it's got the guy from Terminator. Let's get it. Uh, you know, we're not oh my really. God. <laughs> But what uh, a final impact with L Lorenzo Lamas did. Yeah, hell yeah. A former kickboxer champion trains a tough young fighter and hopes of revenge. Yeah, oh, this dead, his brother cool. killed in the ring or whatever. Probably. Yeah. yeah, it's the same old shit, but uh, same old dog shit. All right, so uh, we'll have to go down this road even more. But man. next week, we're gonna do rock and roll high school, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Um, so let me go ahead and let's finish up, guys. Let's do our final segment. And watch Rock and Roll High School. People in the chat. Yeah, this stuff's on YouTube. Um, all of it's on yeah. YouTube. It's, it's a five star for River Man. Five stars, uh, buddy. Uh, you know. Or ten. Temporary ten expectations ten. on that. No. But... Watch it. Ten out of ten. <laughs> 
Uh, you still got to do. Uh, I'm doing it. Your your destiny. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. What are you talking about? I said I'm pulling it up, dude. Okay. All right, everybody. It's time for choose your destiny, Riverman. Battle of the Bulge here. You have to pick one. One lives. One must die. Charlie Sheen or Emilio Estevez. You got to calculate. I mean, don't don't let like his fucking corn kernel teeth in this picture. Look at Charlie Sheen's corn kernel teeth, dude. Oh god, yeah, look terrible. But anyway, you, I, I get it. There's no cake and eat it too in this situation. I know we would love to take a few movies from column A, a few nice movies from column B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, you are you are you are pitting against one guy's filmography against the others, and the 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 best of the bunch has to win. So one of them is dead. One of them lives. Who's got the better? Who's got the films you can't live without? And I know they've been in a couple of films together, oh, this is, but this is tough, man. Um, because they both both been in some great films. And Giggles, Charlie's got to go. Well, let's just go down the list. Like, what are your favorite Charlie movies, and what are your favorite Emilio movies? Let me let me pull this up. Can I can I pull it up? Yeah. Okay. So Charlie. Charlie is in uh, Hot Shots Part 1 and 2. Duh, if you guys like those movies. He's in Platoon, which is a great war classic. Ooh, platoon, yeah. Uh, he's in... They're both... So the movies they're both in, like Men at Work, they both kind of get a point for. So you can't... That's kind of wash. I love Men at Work. Yeah. And they're both yeah. in Young Guns. But... Guns. But... Wall Emilio, is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you said Platoon... The Wraith, I like that movie, even though you don't like it. Ferris I don't love The Wraith, yeah. Uh, they are. He's got some junk straight. He's Red got Dawn. Like, Red Dawn's Red great. Dawn. He's Red in, Dawn. like, The Arrival, which is that Independence Day 90s knockoff movie that's not bad. But Major um, League, Major League 2, The Chase. is. I, I like The I, Chase. I love Adam Rifkin. That's a great movie. I love The Chase. I think it's a good, good, good movie. I haven't seen that since the 90s. Three Musketeers, meh. He's got Dead Men Walking, starring and directed by Brett Michaels. He directed Dead Man Walking? No, not Dead Man Walking. Uh, Dead Man Walking is the Sean Penn. Hold on. <laughs> no, what's that movie? Oh, Letters from Death Row. I was telling you about it. He did this movie called Letters of Death Row, directed and starring Brett Michaels. And Brett Michaels is this criminal on Death Row. And he's got like a shaved head. And he's like writing letters to Charlie. And it's got Martin Sheen in it, too, because Martin Sheen will just fucking do anything. But, uh, yeah, anyway, it, I've never actually seen it. Um, uh, but let's let, look me at, go, let me go to Emilio. Emilio's got Mighty Ducks 1 through 3. That's right, Dr. Giggles, Maximum Overdrive. He's got Breakfast Club. He's got um, – he's in Young Guns as well, but he's also in Young Guns 2. Charlie is not in Young Guns 2. And I actually prefer Young Guns 2. Um, it's – what else has he got? Uh, uh, oh, he's in – Repo Man. Yeah, Repo Man. And of Man. course, he gets the shared credit with, like, uh, you know, uh, Men at Work. He's in, uh, you know, if you like a lot of those Brat Pack movies, like St. Elmo's Fire and stuff like that, I don't know. But Mission Impossible. I the, love first the first Mission Impossible. Yeah. But it's great in that. He's got uh, he's got movies he directed. He's got that movie, The War at Home, with uh, you know, remember War at Home? I think it's got Martin Sheen. I think it's got Kathy Bates. Yeah, you know, these, yep. these these aren't movies that made a real big splash or anything, but they're just the movies I've seen. But in my opinion, oh wait, 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 you, you didn't go on well, what I think first. Well, I didn't say that. I I was just gonna tell you my absolute favorite of each. I'm not going down their whole list. Like the cream of the crop. Like if you had to like pit. If their movies were pit bulls, you have to pick like their few strongest pit bulls to go in the ring. And for me, Charlie, that's Platoon. That's we're washing out the movies they did together because it doesn't make sense. But for Charlie, it's Platoon. Charlie, for me anyway, um, I guess Major League. Uh, oh, I love this movie he did called Cadence, which wasn't a hit or anything, but it was back Lawrence Fishburne. And that's a really good movie. And uh, what else did we say with Charlie? Um, that's notable. What am I missing? I could I could live without the Hot Shot movies. I don't think those are cream of the crop. He's got like a few that I think are really. I don't care for the Wraith that much. Um, and then like Emilio, you got Mighty Ducks one, two, three, which I think is great. Breakfast Club is a fucking seminal classic. I think. Um, Free Jack. I haven't seen Free Jack in forever. And then you got. 
uh, yeah, R- Repo Man, Maximum. I've I've never really loved Maximum Overdrive. Oh, I love Maximum. Overdrive. I've tried watching it a time or two. I always want to watch it again. But uh, you know, Repo Man's really cool. Love Harry Dean Stanton too. And uh, Seen Animal's Fire. So, what's your pick and why? Like I said, <sighs> uh, for movies. What well, for what else if not movies? Television. Out their endowment. For, no. Yeah. So okay. It, it's two different things. So for movies, I would go Emilio Estevez. But Emilio because, Estevez, it wasn't in television, so you I can't know. really compare. I I know, but I think Two and a Half Men is a separate category for uh, Charlie Sheen. I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't include it. I wouldn't include Two and a Half Men. I wouldn't include his TV. Stuff. I okay. I would go Emilio Estevez. I think he's fantastic. Um, I mean, he was in Breakfast Club, Seen All His Fire. I mean, he's Mighty Ducks. He's been in some really as far, good ch- as, far man. Uh, yeah, uh, as far as yeah, as far as the movie. Outsiders. I mean, he was. Oh in, yeah, he was in some bangers, man. Yeah, and uh, you know, I felt like his career kind of went away um, and Charlie's kind of picked up with TV. Yeah. But, but still, I just think uh, the heavy hitters are even heavier for Emilio in my opinion. Oh, you think so too? Yes, I agree. Okay. Okay. Because, you know, I, I don't like the Wraith as much as you do. Yeah. I like uh, Charlie Sheen's really funny and um, Ferris Bueller, but you know, his parts minimal and, uh, you know, I, Lucas, I he's great in Lucas. But yeah, yeah, he's good in Lucas, but I've never been like close to the movie or anything like that. I and like, then I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not. I, I like, I like Major League. I don't, I don't think I love, 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 love. Like it's a, a perfect movie, Major League. I don't, yeah. and I don't like Major League Two as much as Major League One. Uh, but dude, Estevez, he was in the movies that defined my childhood. Mighty Ducks One, Two, Three. You could almost give it to him for that. And Breakfast Club is like he's the, fantastic in Breakfast Club. Breakfast yeah. Club is like it's the quintessential coming of age movie. It yeah, really is. Yeah. It's it's the one. And um, you know, I, I like the first Mission Impossible, but I'm not gonna include that as like the top of his movies. No, no. Um, but you know, Repo Man is a great just like genre cult movie that's just really weird and really cool. And um, so yeah, he wins hundred percent, undisputed. I wish he would. Uh, he still directs and stuff, but I, I wish he would really. He's been trying to put out Guns Three, uh, Young Guns oh, really? Three. Yeah, it's been in like, and which I think is a terrible idea. Don't get me wrong, but he's been trying to get Young Guns Three off the ground for like five years now, and and supposedly, as of really recently, it's still a go. And I'm thinking, who is going to fund a Young Guns Three? It's just, I- it's just. Dude, it's been thirty fucking two. It's been like thirty one years, and and nobody gives a shit about Emilio Estevez today. Like the kids don't. Um, it would I, have to go to a streamer. It would have to go to a streamer, and uh, I mean Emilio has that presence on screen. Like Charlie, I mean, I love Charlie. I think he's great on screen. But Emilio has this look where I want to watch everything Emilio is in. If that makes sense. There's something about him, man. He he seems he seems genuine. I don't know why. He seems like a John Ritter type of genuine guy. If that makes sense. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't know why they wouldn't call Young Guns Three Old Guns. Isn't it just a gimme? Young Guns, Old Guns, because he was saying like the story continues because Young Guns Two is being told through the eyes of brushy bill roberts the guy that came forward in the early 90s that or sorry the early 1900s like in the 1950s 40s that claimed to be billy the kid and that he didn't ever was killed by pat garrett so young guns 2 is kind of like telling the story through that angle which it's never been proven like that he slipped away pat garrett let him get away blah 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 but uh anyway so it could take place between two and that and uh you know Kiefer sutherland's dead there's always characters that aren't alive but basically in lou diamond phillips of course what is he going to do say no to work he's like involved and because uh they said you know you never saw chavez die he's like because you know it, it ends in a shootout chavez is all shot to shit and everything else, but he never dies you see him like walk off and he never dies um so it would be 
the only people that make sense I, oh and also like christian slater yeah. you don't see christian slater survives emilio is the angle they play and then chavez so i don't know i don't think there's an audience for it i mean i'll watch it but like even then even if like they make it i would love to watch it but I, is it really going to be good i don't know i'm not even confident it would be good to be honest with you because you can't it's hard to capture these movies that were made so long ago because Young Guns 1 was like late, late, the late eighties and then Young Guns 2 was turn of the nineties. Like I think 91, I mean, it's just, I get it. It'll take place. Obviously it's going to, it's going to take place. They're old. It's going to yeah. take place fucking 40 years later. I get it. So for them, it would probably be like in the 1930s, which is interesting. But just movies are made differently today. But I guess it would be interesting to see what happened to the young guns. Because if they're this old, they're not playing younger versions of themselves. The The Wild West is over at this point. With them being like 60, no, they're they're firmly into society now. They got cars, they got... So I don't really know what their angle would be. But it would be totally fiction. Because from this point on, like, according to history books... Billy the Kid was killed by Pat the, Pat Garrett, so they're really just gonna go all, going all in with this guy. Um, really survived and faked his death, so it's it's, it's so. Uh, looks like Emilio was in a movie in 1989. It was a made for TV movie with uh, Martin Sheen and Leah Thompson. It's oh. called Night Nightbreaker. It looks like it's about the atom bomb. So I huh. I need to I need to watch that. That sounds interesting. They did. I like their relationship with their dad. Martin Sheen does a lot. Yeah. He's worked with them a lot. And like I said, Martin Sheen's even done the shittiest pro. He did the Brett Michaels movie. He's great. Uh, I love Martin Sheen, man. Martin Sheen's in that movie. I was telling you about. Ka no, he's not. Yeah, Cadence. Mo mm -hmm. Cadence is. Have you seen that? Mm -mm. It's great. It's about um, Charlie Sheen's in the military, and he's trying to get kicked out of the military. And so he gets tattoos on his hands because at the time, because this is like during like the civil rights era, you know, and racism and stuff like that. So he tries to get kicked out. So he gets like tattoos, of eight balls on, he's drunk on his hands and he, he has to serve military prison. And so he, he has to serve time. He's in this bunkhouse with these, these other guys who are all black and they call it cadence because in musical theory, Mr. Barker will be proud. When you have a cadence of notes, the one outlying note is that's that's the cadence, right? So you know, ba 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 ba. Yeah. So it's a joke. He's white. You have all these black guys, and you have the one white guy. Whatever. And then they also like sing in the movie. Like there's a chain gang. That's the sound of the man working yeah, on the yeah. chain. Yeah. And uh, Martin Sheen is the guy that watches over him. He's the military guy, and uh, it's just this movie about. Are you this, are you talking about the War at Home? No, I'm talking about Cadence. Okay, because he made a, a similar movie with. Uh, no, War that's at not home. not War at Home is nothing like this. War at Home is so Emilio, Vietnam War. Uh, Emilio okay. Estevez comes home from the Vietnam War. Yeah. He's got fucking PTSD, and Martin Sheen and Kathy Bates are his parents. It has nothing to do with that. But okay. this is this is uh, Charlie Sheen, not Emilio. He's okay. in military jail and he's with these and Lawrence Fishburne is one of the the black guys that he's with. And uh but yeah, Martin Sheen is this fucking horrible guy and you know, he's getting along with all these black guys. He's learning to like be friends with these black guys. It's got that message there, but Martin Sheen's like riding their ass. He's got mental It's a good flick. And it's one of those like gems like man, this is it just got brushed away with time. Must not have did very well in the box office and it got swept under the rug, but it's it's a really good flick. You should watch that sometime. What I want to know is why they got rid of Emilio in Mighty Ducks movies because or the TV show. Because, I mean, I watched the first season. That was the only reason I watched it. Was yeah, it. yeah. And then when they he didn't come back for season two, I didn't watch it. Like, why am I going to watch this shit? Yeah. Why am I going to watch these annoying little Disney Channel kids and not exactly. have Emilio to... Yeah, Emilio made it tolerable and stuff like that. And I was yeah. looking for it because they set up the end of season one like he was going to coach the team. Yeah. Our help. I'm like, all right, all right, we're going to get. And then, no, it was all uh, pandemic stuff. Oh. Then the pandemic happened and they were supposed to shoot. And uh, it had something to do with their protocols enforcing 
the jab and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And and, 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 a, and a lot of right wing websites were picking it up like, oh, Emilio is one of us. And he had to come and put out the fire saying, no, 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 no. I'm not one of you guys. Uh, I'm all for it. It was. It was more to it than that. It wasn't like really a thing about getting the jab and all that stuff. It was about the way they were handling it. And it was the way it, it, it just caused a big stink. And uh, he moved on essentially mm -hmm. and uh yeah they canceled it good riddance and uh disney wrote it off on their taxes and deleted it and scrubbed it from the internet and scrubbed it from all streamers so you can't even watch the first season if you want the first season you see Is like the first season not on there anymore they scrubbed it what? after they after they canceled it that's what happens these streamers, oh, i didn't know that they scrubbed because if you write it off on your taxes, you have to remove it. You can't have your cake and eat it too. No shit. So I didn't know that. They took a loss and they they called it a write off, and so as a result, they had to scrub it. So this show is nowhere to be found anymore, which is like a hot topic, you know, with some people. It's like, look, it, it you're just eliminating art. It should we're be never, available. We're never going to see that again. No, I mean, is it possible it's floating around on a torrent? Maybe someone ripped it. Yeah, but it's it's eventually oh, going to be crazy. lost forever. Yeah. But bit bit streamers have been doing that a lot lately. They've been scrubbing all kinds of content. They they shit out all this shitty content and then they don't back it because they're they're like funding so many projects and they they Netflix, all these companies cancel shit willy nilly and uh they just take them as write offs on their taxes and they scrub them. Because like I said, you can't you can't take it as a write off in your taxes and also keep it online and monetize it. You have to scrub it. So uh, it's kind of shitty, man. Just for the think people. if you were an actor or a, a writer. Yeah, or, or, a, or a filmmaker or the person that yeah. wrote it or created it. Yeah, or directed it. It's like, what are you going to do? You're going to put the shit on your resume? It's nowhere to be found. It's gone. It's horrible, man. It sucks. But even then, I mean, I'm sure they all got paid, sure. But, like, your body of work is just gone. Like, you're just building. It's, it is it is kind of shitty. But uh, anyway, good call. Emilio, you win this round, my friend. And uh, cool we're gonna one. we're gonna go and wrap up next week. We're gonna dive into Todd's pick, uh, Rock and Roll High School Forever. I it's can't wait be, for that man. It's gonna be a grand old time. I can't wait. I I, I think we you gotta, should you gotta tune in for this man. Wait, I'm what we should. Uh, well, it would be separate. Or do we try and get Leanne on for that? Or do we try and get her to watch the movie for us? I don't know. I I'd, I'd love to just talk to her about it, but I mean we can. Why don't you hit her up, Mister? I'm her best friend. I'm, I'm not, but I I can send her a message. See. Yeah, send her a message. See if you can uh, ro rope that one in. I'll say and we're just... talk we're talking about it. And yeah, uh, it's like we want to talk about Rock and Roll High School forever. Uh, and uh, we would love it if you could come on and and you know we don't really talk about the segments that long, so we could we could have her on for as long as she wants if she doesn't want to give us longer than whatever whatever you know. There's no yeah. obligation here. So, all right, we'll keep you guys posted. Make sure you guys are liking the video, guys. Make sure you guys are interacting. Leave comments. Subscribe. Support us on Patreon. Follow us on Twitch if that's your thing. Buy a t-shirt. Share us with your friends. See you next week. Bye.